Have you ever gazed at the night sky and wondered if somewhere out there, someone else might be looking back? The vastness of space has always been a source of endless speculation. But today, we're not just reaching for the stars, we're delving deep into our own history. Let's embark on an exploration to unravel a captivating question. Did the Aztecs, one of the most powerful and sophisticated ancient civilizations, have a connection with extraterrestrials? The Aztecs, an ancient civilization flourishing between the 14th and 16th centuries, remain a subject of immense fascination. Their vast empire, characterized by great cities like Tenochtitlan, is a testament to their architectural and societal brilliance. However, beyond admiration for their tangible accomplishments, the mystery surrounding the origins of their knowledge has given rise to numerous speculations. One element fueling these speculations is the speed with which the Aztecs seemed to progress. In a relatively short time, they developed complex societal structures, architectural wonders, and advanced systems of agriculture, trade, and astronomy. Given the limited technological means available during their era, this rapid advancement has often baffled historians and scholars. Yet it's not just the speed of their progress that's intriguing, it's the magnitude. The Aztecs, for instance, had a calendar system that rivaled, if not surpassed, those of contemporary civilizations. Their understanding of the cosmos was incredibly sophisticated, leading some to wonder how they achieved such insights without the aid of modern telescopes and tools. This intersection of rapid progress and the depth of their knowledge often brings up a tantalizing question. Did they have a source of information unknown to us? While some believe that they might have drawn from lost civilizations or ancient cultures, Others have ventured further out, suggesting an extraterrestrial influence. Tool to this fire are the intricate carvings and drawings discovered in Aztec ruins. Some depict figures that, to the modern eye, bear an uncanny resemblance to what we'd describe as astronauts or unidentified flying objects. These artifacts, while open to interpretation, have provided ample material for those searching for evidence of ancient alien contact. Finally, the very narratives of the Aztecs play into this theory. Their legends and religious beliefs are peppered with references to the stars, heavenly beings, and events that occurred in the sky. For those inclined to speculate, these tales hint at a connection, not just spiritual but perhaps even physical, between the Aztecs and beings from the cosmos. The Aztecs, among many ancient civilizations, had a profound respect for the heavens. Their daily lives, rituals, and even their majestic structures were intricately intertwined with celestial movements. This entwinement was not a mere fascination. It was an understanding so deep that it often leaves one pondering, how did they achieve this without our modern tools and knowledge? One of the most notable aspects of Aztec civilization is their architectural wonders. At the heart of their capital, Tenochtitlan, stood the Templo Mayor, a colossal double pyramid dedicated to the gods of war and rain. But this was not just an ornamental or religious structure. It was a marvel of astronomical precision. The temple was meticulously aligned with specific celestial bodies and events. During certain times of the year, the sun would rise or set, aligning perfectly with the temple's stairs, creating a visual spectacle that symbolized the descent or ascent of their deities. These alignments were not coincidental. They showcased the Aztecs' intricate knowledge of the solar year and the equinoxes. Furthermore, other structures around the city, and indeed across the Aztec Empire, were positioned concerning specific stars, constellations, and planetary movements. This suggests a systematic and comprehensive understanding of the sky. But why? For the Aztecs, the heavens weren't just a vast expanse above, they were a mirror to their world below. By aligning their buildings with the heavens, they believed they could draw down the power and favor of the gods. Beyond architecture, the very layout of their cities and ceremonial ball courts also demonstrated this celestial connection. These areas were designed to mirror the Milky Way, certain constellations, and other celestial phenomena, turning their cities into a reflection of the universe. The precision with which the Aztecs achieved these alignments is nothing short of remarkable. Without the telescopic technology we possess today, they relied on naked eye observations and perhaps sophisticated tools made of materials like obsidian and quartz. The depth of their understanding has led some to suggest that perhaps this knowledge was not entirely of terrestrial origin. Could it be that the Aztecs had guidance from a more advanced civilization, maybe even extraterrestrial? While there's no concrete evidence to confirm such theories, 
The mere existence of their awe-inspiring sky-aligned architecture keeps the door of speculation wide open. The Aztecs held a rich tapestry of gods and deities that governed various aspects of their world, many of which had clear associations with celestial objects and phenomena. These connections between the gods and the skies were not just symbolic, but were fundamental to Aztec beliefs and rituals, raising questions about their origin and the profound nature of these associations. One of the most revered gods in the Aztec pantheon was Huitzilopochtli, the sun god and god of war. Depicted as a hummingbird or an eagle, he was believed to be in a constant battle, fighting against the darkness to ensure the sun's rebirth every morning. The daily journey of the sun was seen as a mirror to Huitzilopochtli's struggle, a cosmic play where the sun's setting was a temporary defeat, only to rise again triumphant. The sun, the most visible and significant celestial body, was not just a glowing disk in the sky for the Aztecs, it was the embodiment of a god, a deity that battled daily for them. Similarly, the moon god Tequistacatl had his own tail, often depicted as an older deity who carries a large white shell symbolizing the lunar glow. In certain Aztec myths, it was believed that Tequistacatl attempted to become the sun but was unsuccessful, resigning him to his cooler, dimmer state as the moon. Then there were the Tzitzimime, celestial deities associated with stars. They were believed to be the protectors of the heavens, often portrayed as skeletal figures that could descend to earth during solar eclipses, symbolizing the temporary chaos in the heavens. These beings, while terrifying, were essential in maintaining the cosmic balance. The centrality of these celestial gods in Aztec myths and daily life points to an intense focus on the skies. Rituals, sacrifices and ceremonies were meticulously planned around celestial events. Given the detailed stories and characteristics attributed to these gods, one cannot help but wonder, were these narratives born solely from human imagination and observation? Or might they have been influenced by encounters or teachings from beings beyond our world? Some suggest that the detailed and profound connections between the gods and celestial bodies might hint at ancient encounters with beings from the skies, possibly extraterrestrials. While this remains a theory without definitive evidence, the intricate relationship the Aztecs held with their gods from the heavens continues to captivate our imagination and fuel such intriguing speculations. The Aztecs, like many ancient civilizations, have left behind a legacy of artifacts and records that still surprise and intrigue researchers today. Among the vast array of their cultural and scientific accomplishments, there are a few that stand out and make us question the sources of their knowledge. Could it be possible that some of this knowledge came from a source not of this earth? One of the first pieces of evidence that jumps out is the Aztec calendar, also known as the Sunstone. This massive, intricately carved stone, weighing around 25 tons, displays a comprehensive understanding of time and astronomy. It not only recorded days, months and cosmic cycles, but also depicted various gods and mythological creatures, suggesting a link between celestial phenomena and their deities. The precision with which the Aztecs could predict solar and lunar eclipses, the Venus cycle and other celestial events is astonishing. Their ability to track and record these cycles with such accuracy without the aid of telescopic equipment is still a topic of research and debate. Then, there's the matter of their architectural prowess. The city of Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Aztec Empire, was an engineering marvel of its time. Floating gardens, aqueducts, and a complex grid system of canals showcased a knowledge of civil engineering and urban planning that was highly advanced for its era. The temples and pyramids of the city aligned with specific celestial bodies stood as testaments to the Aztec's advanced knowledge in both architecture and astronomy. The ceremonial mask of Xutacutli, the god of fire, offers another clue. Made of turquoise mosaics, the mask showcases a detailed knowledge of lapidary work, the precision in which each tiny piece of turquoise was shaped and assembled is a testament to their advanced craftsmanship. How the Aztecs acquired such detailed knowledge in various fields, from metallurgy to gem crafting, remains an intriguing question. Moreover, in Aztec mythology, Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent god, is described as a wise teacher who brought knowledge of agriculture, metallurgy and the arts to the Aztecs. Depictions of this deity, often shown as a snake with feathers or even in more humanoid forms with elaborate headgear, have led some to speculate about extraterrestrial connections. Could Quetzalcoatl's descriptions be an ancient interpretation of a visitor from another world? 
one who brought new knowledge and technologies to the Aztecs. While definitive evidence linking the Aztecs to extraterrestrial beings is elusive, the civilization's advanced artifacts and knowledge continue to fuel such theories. The precision of their calendars, the sophistication of their architecture, and the intricate details of their artwork all pose questions about the origins of their advanced understanding. Were these accomplishments the result of human ingenuity alone, or might there have been some otherworldly influence? The debate rages on, but one thing is for sure. The legacy of the Aztecs continues to captivate and inspire wonder in all who delve into their mysteries. The Aztecs, residing in what is today central Mexico, were not only masterful engineers and fierce warriors, but also exceptional astronomers and storytellers. Their relationship with the heavens was not a mere fascination. It was an integral part of their daily life, religion, and identity. As the night sky unfolded above them, the Aztecs saw not just stars, but tales of gods, creation, and the cosmic dance of time and destiny. Central to Aztec astronomy was the observance of celestial bodies, especially the movement of the Sun, Moon, and Venus. Venus, particularly, was of paramount importance. The Aztecs called it the morning and evening star. Its cycles, both as the morning star and the evening star, were meticulously recorded and its appearances and disappearances were used to time certain ritual events and ceremonies. This emphasis on Venus is not entirely surprising, given that its brightness is surpassed only by the sun and the moon in the night sky. However, more than just tracking celestial bodies, the Aztecs wove intricate myths around them. The Milky Way, for instance, was seen as the pathway of the dead, a shimmering road that souls traveled on their journey to the afterlife, this luminescent band across the night sky was not just a collection of stars to the Aztecs, it was a spiritual guide, a beacon for those who had passed on. The Maya civilization, flourishing from 2000 BC to the 16th century AD, left behind an array of monumental structures with the grandiosity and precision that continues to astound the modern world. These temples, pyramids and palaces dotted across the Yucatan Peninsula rise from the jungle as if defying the very gravity that binds us the intricacy of the Mayan calendar, their written language, and the astronomical alignments found within their architecture, pose the question, was this the work of mere mortals, or could there have been otherworldly assistance? Take, for example, the Temple of Kukulkan, also known as El Castillo, in Chichen Itza. On the spring and autumn equinoxes, the play of light and shadow on the pyramid staircase creates the illusion of a serpent descending, symbolizing the feathered serpent god, Kukulkan. Such a sight begs the question, how did the Maya acquire such complex astronomical knowledge? When we delve into the heart of the ancient astronaut theories concerning the Maya, we encounter a rich tapestry of art, architecture, and myth that seems to some to extend beyond earthly origins. Proponents of these theories point to various artifacts and architectural marvels, claiming they could be evidence of extraterrestrial contact in ancient times. Take, for example, the intricate stelae and murals found in sites like Palenque and Bonampak. These ancient stones, etched with the history and cosmology of the Maya, depict what some believe to be figures in elaborate costumes that could be interpreted as some form of spacesuit. Particularly, the sarcophagus lid of the great ruler Pakal of Palenque has been at the center of alien speculation. The carving shows Pakal in what appears to be a reclined position, surrounded by what could be construed as machinery perhaps even a spacecraft. Skeptics, however, argue that this is a depiction of the Mayan world tree and Pakal's descent into the underworld, part of the Maya's rich iconography and storytelling. Another piece of the puzzle is the Maya's apparent obsession with the stars. Their pyramids, like the ones found in the city of Oxmal, were not just tombs or temples, but were also aligned with celestial bodies and events. For the Maya, Venus was more than just a planet. It was a harbinger of war and a timekeeper for the cycles of their leaders and agriculture. The movements of Venus were tracked with such accuracy that some theorists suggest it was not just through careful observation, but through a knowledge given to them with hints of an extraterrestrial source. Beyond the alignment of their pyramids and the precision of their astronomical knowledge, the Maya's own creation stories speak of gods who descended from the sky. The Popol Vuh, the sacred book of the Maya, recounts the story of the hero twins who ascend to the heavens and converse with the gods themselves. For those inclined to believe in the ancient astronaut theories, such texts are not merely myth but a historical account of alien visitation. 
This blend of sophisticated knowledge with legends of gods from the stars creates a fertile ground for theories of ancient astronauts. It's a captivating idea that once upon a time beings from another world looked upon Earth and chose to impart wisdom to the ancient Maya, helping to create one of the most enigmatic civilizations known to history. The Mayan calendar is a testament to the complexity and sophistication of Mesoamerican science and cosmology, an intellectual heritage that continues to intrigue and baffle scholars and enthusiasts alike. This ancient timekeeping system is far more than a method to mark the days. It is an intricate web of cycles and epochs that interlock with the movements of celestial bodies, deeply rooted in Mayan mythology and worldview. One of the most famous aspects of the Mayan calendar is the Long Count, a cyclical calendar that spans roughly 5,126 years, ending on a date that many have associated with December 21, 2012. This particular date caused a modern-day stir, with some interpreting it as a prediction for the end of the world. In reality, for the Maya, it signified the end of a great cycle and the beginning of another, much like the odometer of a car rolling over to mark a new mileage. Within the long count are smaller cycles like the Tzolkin, a 260-day calendar which intertwines a sequence of 20-day names with 13 numbers, creating 260 unique day combinations that had both practical and ceremonial importance. It is believed this calendar was used for determining auspicious days for events such as sowing crops, warfare, and religious ceremonies. The Harb, a solar calendar, had 365 days and was used alongside the Tolkien to create a synchronized cycle called the Calendar Round, which would repeat every 52 Harb years. The precise alignment of their calendar with astronomical cycles is evidence of the Maya's extensive knowledge of astronomy. They were meticulous sky watchers, documenting the patterns of the moon, the apparitions of comets, and even the cycles of planets such as Venus and Mars with startling precision. Their observatories like the Caracol at Chichen Itza were marvels of architectural engineering designed to cast a watchful eye upon the heavens. The calendar also held a sacred aspect. The Maya believed that time was a living entity and that each day had a specific deity associated with it, which would influence the day's events. The interplay between the days, the deities and the celestial bodies formed a complex religious system that permeated every aspect of Maya life, from agriculture to leadership and identity. Much of what we know about the Maya calendar comes from codices, like the Dresden Codex, which is filled with astronomical tables that predict eclipses and the movements of planets with astonishing accuracy. It's this mastery of the cosmos, encapsulated in their calendric system, that has led some to speculate about the origins of their knowledge. Was it the result of generations of careful observation, or as some suggest, could it have been influenced by otherworldly sources? In the dense jungles of Mesoamerica, the ruins of the Mayan civilization whisper secrets of their advanced understanding of astronomy and the cosmos. Among these secrets are the astounding alignments and architectural anomalies that go far beyond aesthetic design and delve into the realm of the celestial. Take, for instance, the Pyramid of Kukulkan at Chichen Itza. Twice a year during the spring and autumn equinoxes, the setting sun casts a series of shadows on the steps of the pyramid that resemble the slithering body of a snake, culminating in the stone-carved head of Kukulkan at the base. This isn't just a coincidence. The Maya had engineered this astounding phenomenon with intentional precision, marrying their architectural prowess with their astronomical observations. This shadow play is not the only instance where architecture and cosmology intersect in Mayan culture. The orientations of many Mayan temples and pyramids align with the positions of the rising or setting sun on significant dates, such as the solstices. Some buildings are positioned in such a way that they frame the moon at its northernmost and southernmost zeniths. These structures served a dual purpose as both places of worship and sophisticated observatories that charted the movements of celestial bodies with an accuracy that rivals modern methods. But the anomalies don't stop at solar phenomena. The Maya had a particular reverence for Venus, a planet they associated with the god Kukulkan, and many of their ceremonial complexes seem to align with the cyclical appearance and disappearance of Venus in the night sky. The Dresden Codex, one of the few surviving pre-Columbian Maya books, contains detailed Venus tables that predict the planet's path with an error margin of just two hours every 500 years. 
Another anomaly lies in the city of Tikal, where a series of temples align perfectly with the stars of the Orion constellation. This configuration is not accidental. The Maya believed that the dark rift of the Milky Way, which they called the Zibalba B or Black Road, was the path to the underworld, and the Orion constellation played a key role in their cosmology. Even more curious is the city of Copan, with its hieroglyphic stairway that ascends towards the heavens, containing more Mayan glyphs than any other monuments in the region. The stairway itself seems to serve as a historical narrative, but also aligns with the sun on specific dates, possibly connected to the history it depicts. These architectural anomalies suggest that the Maya were not just building structures for the living or the dead, they were creating a landscape in sync with the heavens, a sort of dialogue between the earth and the sky. Each building, each city was a note in a grand cosmic composition that played out across their civilization. The sophistication of these alignments and the knowledge required to achieve them prompts a deeper question. Was this advanced understanding of astronomy and mathematics homegrown? Or is it possible that it was influenced by external forces, perhaps by encounters with advanced travelers from beyond our world? While mainstream archaeology credits centuries of accumulated knowledge and cultural evolution, the idea of extraterrestrial influence remains a tantalizing possibility for many. The architectural marvels of the Mayan civilization remain not only as a testament to their religious and cultural beliefs, but also as an embodiment of their engineering acumen and sophisticated knowledge systems. Deep within the Central American rainforest, structures such as pyramids, temples and entire cities reflect a level of advanced engineering that seems almost anachronistic for their time. Among the many feats of Mayan engineering, the water systems of Palenque stand out. They constructed an intricate network of aqueducts, underground channels and reservoirs to manage the flow of water with precision. The genius of this design is evident in the way it mitigated flooding during heavy rains, conserved water for periods of drought and even controlled water pressure. They used the natural incline of the land to their advantage, showcasing an understanding of hydraulic engineering that was incredibly advanced for a civilization of the pre-industrial era. In terms of materials, while the Maya lacked access to metals like iron or steel, they nonetheless erected structures that have withstood the test of time. They developed a type of concrete from burning limestone and mixing it with water, creating a substance that hardened over time. This material was often used in conjunction with their detailed stonework. The precise way the Mayans cut and fitted these stone blocks together, often without the use of mortar, is a marvel of construction. Some of these joints are so tight that even a sheet of paper cannot be inserted between the stones. The Mayans also displayed a profound understanding of acoustics. The Great Ball Court at Chichen Itza, for example, is an architectural phenomenon. If a person claps their hands at one end, the sound creates a series of echoes that mimic the chirp of the sacred Quetzal bird. This is no simple echo, but a sophisticated manipulation of sound waves, deliberately achieved through the dimensions and textures of the structure. Such intentional acoustic effects are also found in their temples and pyramids, where footsteps ascend to sound like raindrops, and spoken words can travel across vast courtyards with clarity. Then there's the mystery of the Mayan arch, known as the Corbel Vault. Unlike the true arches of Roman construction, the Mayan arch consists of stepped corbel stones that project inward from the walls until they meet at a peak. While this method did not allow for the support of massive structures above, it was perfectly suited to the materials and climate of the Mayans, facilitating the construction of expansive upper-level rooms and impressive doorways. Imagine traversing the highlands of Peru and stumbling upon the ruins of Machu Picchu, this ancient Inca site, perched between the stark peaks of the Andes, is not just a wonder of the world, but also a marvel of engineering that leaves even the most skeptical visitor in awe. The Incas constructed this citadel without the wheel, without iron tools, and without a written plan, yet its buildings, terraces, and ramps blend seamlessly into the mountain topography. What's particularly astonishing is the precision with which the Incas cut and fitted stones, some of these stones weigh well over 50 tons, yet they interlock with such exactness that the joints don't permit the passage of a hair. This level of detail suggests more than just architectural prowess. It whispers of an intimate understanding of geology, geometry and astronomy. The stones themselves, some believe, carry a celestial secret, 
The Inca civilization revered the heavens, and their builders oriented the entire city astronomically. Certain windows and doorways aligned perfectly with the solstices, while others framed mountains that were sacred to their cosmology. There's a rhythmic pattern to these structures that seems to echo the celestial dance of stars and planets. Then there's the question of how these massive stones were transported. Legends speak of a mystical technique involving the use of sound to levitate the boulders. While this sounds like the stuff of science fiction, it aligns with the Inca's advanced knowledge of acoustics, evidenced by places like the Saksai Waman Fortress, where even a whisper can carry across great distances due to the architecture's acoustic properties. The method of cutting the stones is equally baffling. Some stones have perfectly straight cuts and angles that would challenge modern power tools. Theories abound, from the use of a plant with acidic properties to soften rock, to the possibility of advanced ancient technologies lost to time. The lack of definitive evidence has allowed speculation to flourish, with some postulating that these cutting methods are not of this world. Moreover, the way these structures have withstood the test of time and resisted earthquakes is further testimony to their engineering. The Incas employed a technique known as ashlar masonry, where stones are cut to fit together without mortar. Remarkably, during seismic activity, these stones dance. They move and then settle back into place, unharmed. This isn't just construction. It's a harmonious dialogue with the Earth's movements. One of the most tantalizing and mysterious legacies of the Inca civilization is the discovery of elongated skulls. These cranial deformations have spurred a wealth of speculation and intrigue, leading some to propose connections with otherworldly beings or unknown practices. The Inca culture, along with other Andean civilizations, practiced cranial deformation, a custom where the skulls of infants were intentionally modified through binding, resulting in elongated shapes as the child grew. It is a tradition found in many different cultures worldwide, but the prevalence and extremes to which it was taken in Inca society have captured the imagination of historians and enthusiasts alike. To the Incas, the elongated shape of the skull was associated with beauty, status, and nobility. It was likely that the practice began as an imitation of a naturally occurring genetic trait, a status symbol that distinguished the elite from the common populace. Skull deformation began shortly after birth, when the infant's skull was most pliable. Boards and tightly bound cloth were used to gradually alter the shape of the head over time. These skulls have led to various theories, ranging from the plausible to the fantastical. Some suggest that the Incas might have been trying to emulate the appearance of an esteemed ancestor or a revered figure from their mythology. Others have taken the presence of these skulls as evidence of ancient astronaut theories, suggesting that the Incas were mimicking beings from beyond the stars. Surgical skill is another aspect highlighted by Inca skulls. Not only did they modify skulls for aesthetic and cultural reasons, but they also performed successful cranial surgeries, trepanation for medical purposes. These surgeries often removed small pieces of the skull following trauma to reduce pressure and allow healing. The survival rate of these procedures was remarkably high for pre-modern surgery, attesting to their medical knowledge and skill. In the shadows of the Andean mountains lies evidence of a civilization that, at its peak, stretched over much of South America. The Incas, known for their sophisticated society and strikingly complex urban planning, were not just builders but artisans of the land who seemed to have a profound connection with their environment. Their architectural feats are not merely structures, they are symphonies of stone and earth, harmonizing with the undulating landscapes. One of the most puzzling aspects of Incan architecture is its diversity and adaptation to the challenging terrain of the Andes. From the arid coastal plains to the steep highlands, Inca structures were tailored to their surroundings with such efficiency that modern engineers still study their techniques. For instance, the city of Pisac is a testament to the Inca's understanding of agricultural and urban planning. It features an integration of water management and terrace farming that maximizes the arable land area, turning steep mountainsides into lush, productive gardens. The use of terracing is a marvel in itself. These weren't just simple dirt embankments. The Incas constructed multi-layered terraces with a sophisticated drainage system to prevent water logging and soil erosion. Beneath the surface of each terrace lies a complex layering of sand, gravel and rock that filters water and ensures the survival of crops even in the harshest of droughts. And then there's Olante Tambo, 
a fortress that doubles as a temple, exhibiting both the defensive might and the spiritual aspirations of the Inca. It is home to some of the most massive stones ever used in Inca construction, which were transported from quarries miles away. The logistics of such an endeavor are mind-boggling, especially considering the steep terrain and lack of wheel-based transportation. Inca stonework is yet another enigma. The precision of their cuts is so remarkable that it often appears as if the stones have been molded like clay. No mortar was used, the stones are so exquisitely carved and wedged that they have survived centuries of earthquakes. This masonry was not merely functional but also symbolic, often representing the Inca's relationship with nature. The famous 12-angled stone in Cusco is not just an architectural wonder, but a symbol of the Inca's ability to master the wild, unruly forces of the earth and bind them into a coherent, ordered form. Their cities, like Machu Picchu, defy conventional understanding. Placed high in the clouds, these urban centers were self-sufficient, with advanced water channels and storage systems, ensuring a constant supply of fresh water. The careful placement of buildings to catch the morning sun or to provide a windbreak speaks of a detailed knowledge of the environment and an ability to adapt structures to serve both practical and ceremonial purposes. Indeed, their architectural achievements seem almost superhuman, which fuels speculations about where the Incas could have acquired such knowledge. Some believe that their wisdom was not of this earth, given to them by visitors from the stars who left no other trace than these marvels of stone and soil. This theory is bolstered by the Inca's own mythology, which tells of Viracocha, the creator god who came from the sea and taught the Incas all they knew before heading into the west. On the arid plains of the Peruvian desert, the Nazca lines sprawl across the landscape like a vast tapestry of geoglyphs etched into the earth. These monumental figures range from geometric shapes to zoomorphic designs, including spiders, monkeys, and even what some interpret as astronauts. Their sheer scale defies immediate comprehension and their purpose is cloaked in mystery. Created by the Nazca culture around 500 BCE to 500 CE, these lines were formed by the simple but laborious technique of removing the reddish-brown iron oxide-coated pebbles that cover the surface of the Nazca Desert and uncovering the contrasting whitish ground beneath. Most of the figures are so large that they can only be fully appreciated from the air a fact that has tantalized observers and led to rampant speculation about their creator's intended audience. Theories about the line's purpose range from the astronomical to the divine. One prevailing theory suggests that the lines function as a sort of astronomical calendar, with certain lines aligning to the positions of the sun, moon and stars at pivotal times of the year, such as solstices. This celestial alignment indicates a sophisticated knowledge of astronomy, and a deep need to intertwine their cultural and spiritual practices with the heavens above. Another theory posits that the lines may have played a role in pilgrimage rituals. The lines could have directed processions to sites of great ritual importance, with the shapes perhaps symbolizing animals and objects of religious significance. Imagine lines of worshippers tracing the contours of these immense drawings, a physical and spiritual journey across the sacred landscape the lines guiding not just their path, but their meditative state. The lines have also been linked to water, a precious resource in such a parched environment. Some researchers have speculated that the geoglyphs were part of a complex system related to water worship and water conservation. With each figure potentially representing a plea to the gods for rain, or perhaps marking the location of underground water sources, the Nazca lines may be a grand expression of the community's collective struggle for survival in an unforgiving climate. Adding to their mystery is the method of construction. The precision with which the lines were made suggests careful planning and coordination, yet the Nazca people left no written records of their methods. It's believed that they used simple tools and surveying equipment made from sticks and ropes, but the execution of such large-scale figures with such accuracy points to a highly organized society with a strong sense of communal effort. Moreover, the durability of the lines is nothing short of astonishing. In a region where winds can whip up sand with fierce intensity, the lines have remained largely undisturbed for over a millennium. This is partly due to the climate one of the driest on Earth and the hard clay-like soil, which is baked solid by the sun. Recent discoveries made using modern technology have uncovered even more lines, suggesting that what we see today may only be a fraction of what existed. 
These new figures, which include more human-like images, add depth to the enigma of the Nazca lines. They underscore our still-evolving understanding of this ancient culture, and they remind us that the Earth holds many secrets, silently waiting beneath our feet. Stepping back in time, our journey begins around 3300 BCE, in a region that's now modern-day Pakistan and northwest India. Here, stretching over a vast expanse of 1.25 million square kilometers, the Indus Valley Civilization, or IVC, began to take root. This area was larger than the contemporary civilizations of ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia combined. At its zenith, the IVC comprised of major urban centers like Mohenjo-Daro, Harappa, Kalibangan, and Dolavira. Mohenjo-Daro, in particular, stands as a testament to the its brilliance in urban planning. Its streets were laid out in a grid-like pattern, indicating a high level of organization. Houses, built from uniformly sized bricks, were equipped with indoor plumbing, a feature that wouldn't be common in urban centers in other parts of the world for millennia. Interestingly, the IVC had no monumental structures like pyramids, temples, or palaces, yet this didn't mean they lacked sophistication. Their cities were equipped with advanced water management systems, including wells, drainage systems, and even public baths. The Great Bath of Mohenjo-Daro is a particularly striking example. With a length of nearly 12 meters, it is reminiscent of a modern-day swimming pool, and it's believed to have held religious significance. One of the most intriguing aspects of the is their yet-to-be-deciphered script. Found on a variety of objects, from seals to pottery, this script suggests a complex language and potentially a rich literary tradition. The presence of a standardized script throughout the region suggests a coordinated and widespread educational system. Trade seemed to play a significant role in the life of the Indus Valley residents. Goods from the Indus Valley have been found as far away as Mesopotamia, indicating they were part of a vast trade network. They used standardized weights and measures, ensuring fairness in trade and commerce. This standardization, present in both their trade and city planning, hints at a centralized authority or a shared cultural consensus. On a cultural front, the Indus Valley appeared to have a deep reverence for animals. Many seals depict creatures, both real and mythical, pointing to their importance in religious or cultural narratives. The bull, in particular, appears frequently, perhaps suggesting its significance in rituals or as a symbol of prosperity. Despite all we've uncovered, the valley still holds many secrets. Their societal structure, religious practices, and reasons for their eventual decline around 1300 BCE remain topics of intense research and speculation. The quest for understanding our universe often sends us looking beyond the stars, but sometimes the most intriguing clues lie buried in the sands of time. The Indus Valley civilization offers a constellation of such mysterious hints, each more puzzling than the last. For starters, there's the advanced architectural and urban planning. Cities like Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa weren't just impressive for their time, they were far ahead, showcasing advancements that have made some wonder. Could they have been inspired by external, possibly extraterrestrial influences? These cities had streets laid out in a grid-like pattern, with houses equipped with waste disposal systems, features that showcased an understanding of sanitation and urban infrastructure that seems surprisingly modern. The famous Pashupati seal is another tantalizing piece of the cosmic puzzle. Found in Mohenjo-Daro, this seal depicts a horned figure surrounded by animals. While many historians interpret this as an early representation of a deity, perhaps even a precursor to the Hindu god Shiva, others have ventured to propose an alternative theory. The horned figure, sitting in what appears to be a yogic pose, and the assortment of animals have been interpreted by some as a portrayal of an extraterrestrial being, especially when you consider the somewhat non-human proportions and features of the figure. Then, of course, there's the script. The IVC script remains one of the world's undeciphered languages. While many ancient scripts have been decoded over the centuries, the script has resisted all attempts. Found on seals, pottery, and other artifacts, the script runs right to left, and its symbols are unlike any other known ancient writing system. Some enthusiasts propose a tantalizing theory. Could this script be a form of cosmic communication? Or perhaps, does it contain knowledge imparted by extraterrestrial visitors? 
The fascination with astronomy adds another layer to the extraterrestrial hypothesis. While concrete evidence of their astronomical knowledge is scarce, the alignment of some of their cities does show an understanding of cardinal directions. Some structures within these cities also appear to be aligned with specific celestial bodies, suggesting a potential interest in, or even veneration of, the cosmos. Furthermore, artifacts and seals from the Indus Valley often feature symbols that resemble celestial objects. These depictions of stars, planets, and other celestial bodies combined with their advanced urban centers and the mysterious script form a tapestry of clues that has led some to wonder, were the people of the Indus Valley merely keen observers of the sky, or was there a deeper, perhaps otherworldly connection? The trail of cosmic clues is long and winding, filled with a blend of concrete findings and speculative interpretations. Each artifact, city layout, and script offers a piece of the puzzle, beckoning us to peer deeper into the cosmos of the past and wonder about the connections between our ancient ancestors and the vast expanse of the universe. Venturing deeper into the enigma of the Indus Valley civilization, one can't help but encounter a crossroads of perplexing questions. Was their advanced knowledge a result of sheer human ingenuity, or could there be more than meets the eye? The tightrope between ancient imagination and the possibility of cosmic reality is a tantalizing one to tread. Firstly, there's the realm of art and symbolism. The myriad of seals, figurines, and artifacts from there often depict creatures and symbols that seem otherworldly. For instance, there's the aforementioned Pashupati seal. While many experts see it as an earthly deity surrounded by known animals, others are intrigued by the figure's posture and surroundings. Could it be a being from another world, as depicted by an ancient civilization that had no other way to describe it other than through their artistic interpretations? Then, we stumble upon the mystery of their technological prowess. The IVC's water management systems, city planning, and construction methods were not only ahead of their time, but were also notably different from other contemporary civilizations. This uniqueness gives rise to an intriguing question. Were these systems developed purely from human trial and error, or was there some external inspiration? The extensive trade networks also provide fertile ground for speculation. Artifacts from the civilization have been found as far away as Mesopotamia. These long-distance connections open up the possibility of cultural exchanges where stories, myths, and perhaps even accounts of extraterrestrial encounters could have been shared. Could the tales of sky gods or celestial beings, common in many ancient cultures, have roots in shared experiences or shared imaginations? Moreover, the Indus Valley people's apparent interest in the cosmos, as suggested by potential astronomical alignments of their structures, brings forth a tantalizing thought. Were they simply marking seasons and celestial events, or were they trying to reach out, or perhaps commemorate a significant cosmic event or visitation? It's important, however, to ground these speculations in the soil of evidence and expert consensus. The majority of historians and archaeologists lean towards more terrestrial explanations for the IVC's accomplishments and symbols. While it's exhilarating to imagine ancient astronauts guiding the civilization, it's equally, if not more, awe-inspiring to acknowledge the capability of our ancestors to achieve such marvels through their observation, ingenuity, and perseverance. In the end, whether one sees the tales and accomplishments of the Indus Valley as products of ancient imagination or hints at cosmic reality, they undeniably provoke a sense of wonder. They invite us to look up at the stars and ponder, to dive deep into our past and speculate, and most importantly, to never stop questioning. The story of the Indus Valley civilization beckons us with a mosaic of tantalizing details, each shard calling for careful examination. As we weigh the evidence, it's essential to distinguish between concrete findings, plausible hypotheses, and speculative narratives. The heart of the valley lies in its urban centers, such as Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. Unearthing these cities has provided archaeologists with a trove of evidence. The meticulous grid patterns of their streets and the sophistication of their sewage systems highlight an advanced understanding of urban planning. Does this suggest external possibly extraterrestrial intervention. 
Or could it be the result of generations of accumulated knowledge and adaptation to their environment? By juxtaposing these cities with contemporaneous civilizations, it becomes clear that while the IVC was notably advanced, it wasn't entirely unique in its architectural prowess. Other ancient cultures also exhibited advancements, albeit in different areas, without necessarily invoking external influences. The enigmatic script is another crucial piece of evidence. Found on countless seals, pottery shards, and other artifacts, the symbols remain undeciphered. Herein lies an important distinction. Undeciphered doesn't mean undecipherable. There have been other scripts like Linear B from ancient Greece, which remained enigmatic for decades before being deciphered. So while the script poses a challenge, attributing its mystery to cosmic origins might be premature. When it comes to artifacts, the IVC is rich in depictions that fire the imagination. However, as with the Pashupati seal, it's critical to approach these with a dual lens, understanding the cultural and historical context, while also appreciating the universality of human imagination. Many ancient civilizations have their share of mythological creatures and deities, born from a mix of observation, cultural narratives, and perhaps a dash of psychedelics. Trade provides an insight into the connection with the broader ancient world. While they indeed had long-reaching trade networks, this interconnectedness likely led to cultural exchanges. This cross-cultural interaction can explain similarities in myths or stories across civilizations, reducing the need to theorize about shared extraterrestrial experiences. The purported astronomical interests of the Indus Valley add another layer to the evidence. Alignments of certain structures with celestial bodies do suggest an understanding of the cosmos. However, this isn't unique to the IVC. Many ancient civilizations, from the Mayans to the ancient Egyptians, exhibited profound astronomical knowledge, rooted primarily in the necessity for agricultural calendars rather than cosmic visitations. As we sift through the sands of evidence, the picture that emerges is one of a remarkable civilization, deeply in tune with its environment and brimming with innovation. While the allure of otherworldly explanations is strong, it's essential to ground our interpretations in the vast array of tangible evidence we have always leaving room for the wonder and mystery that the IVC so generously offers. In the end, the idea of aliens visiting ancient civilizations, including the Indus Valley, is a tantalizing theory that captures our collective imaginations. It's a testament to the endless curiosity of the human spirit, always seeking answers to the universe's grandest mysteries. Whether or not extraterrestrials played a role in the IVC, what's undeniable is the allure of the unknown, the Indus Valley civilization, with its undeciphered script and intricate urban landscapes, will continue to be a source of wonder, reminding us that sometimes the journey to unravel a mystery is just as enchanting as the answer itself. Have you ever looked up at the stars and wondered how our ancestors interpreted these celestial bodies? What if I told you there was a civilization that not only gazed at the cosmos, but wrote sophisticated texts that connected life, nature, and the universe in one profound framework? This was the Vedic civilization, a culture that emerged around the same time when the pyramids were being built in Egypt, but halfway across the world in the Indian subcontinent. Their fascinating contributions to astronomy, philosophy, and mathematics are still evident in modern society, Yet their beliefs and lore seem to intertwine with other ancient civilizations, even hinting at advanced technologies and extraterrestrial connections. So let's embark on a journey into the past to a time when the Vedas were being composed and uncover the intriguing world of the Vedic civilization. The Vedic civilization is named after the Vedas, which are the oldest scriptures in Hindu literature. But these are not just religious texts. They are in many ways a window into the culture science and philosophy of a society that thrived between 1500 and 500 BC. A significant component of ancient Indian society, the Vedic civilization spanned across the northern and northwestern parts of India, covering the modern-day states of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and parts of Rajasthan. The Vedic civilization's chronology itself is intriguing. Its beginning coincides with the end of the Indus Valley civilization, leading some to suggest that the Vedic people might have been the successors of the Indus Valley people. 
Others suggest that they were entirely distinct entities, with the Vedic civilization being pastoral and nomadic compared to the urban, settled life of the Indus Valley civilization. However, it's clear that both civilizations were remarkably advanced for their time. The civilization gets its name from the four Vedas, Rigveda, Yajurveda, Samaveda, and Atharvaveda. These texts are a collection of hymns, rituals, and chants used in religious rites and ceremonies. The texts are written in Sanskrit, and they provide valuable insights into the societal structure, economic practices, and philosophical beliefs of the Vedic people. But they also contain some intriguing elements that have sparked debates among scholars and enthusiasts alike. References to advanced astronomical knowledge, mentions of flying machines or vimanas, and sophisticated metallurgical practices raise questions about how much the Vedic civilization knew and understood. Some argue that these elements point towards ancient technology, possibly even interaction with extraterrestrial intelligence, while others interpret them as metaphors or religious symbolism. The debate continues, making the Vedic civilization an endless source of intrigue and fascination. The Vedic civilization has left an indelible mark on the world, and its influence continues to shape our modern lives in ways that we may not even recognize. We owe a great deal of our understanding of early philosophy, astronomy, mathematics, and health sciences to this ancient civilization. Take, for instance, the concept of zero. Today, we take it for granted, but it was during the Vedic period that mathematicians began grappling with this revolutionary concept, changing the course of mathematics forever. Vedic astronomy was equally advanced. The texts detail a deep understanding of celestial mechanics. The Vedas describe how the Earth revolves around the Sun, a fact that was only widely accepted much later in human history. They also mention Vimanas, which many interpret as references to flying machines, causing speculations about possible advanced technology or even ancient aviation. The health sciences also saw significant advancements during the Vedic period. The Rigveda and Atharva Veda mention numerous plants and herbs used for medicinal purposes, marking the early beginnings of Ayurveda one of the world's oldest holistic healing systems. Yoga, a practice that is now globally recognized for promoting physical and mental well-being, also finds its roots in the Vedic civilization. In terms of societal contributions, the Vedic civilization also pioneered the caste system, an intricate social structure that has shaped Indian society for centuries. While controversial in its implications, it provides unique insights into the cultural and social organization of the time. Of course, the spiritual philosophy of the Vedas has had a profound influence, forming the foundation for Hinduism and inspiring later philosophies like Buddhism and Jainism. The teachings emphasize the pursuit of knowledge, the harmony of the individual and the cosmos, and the principles of Dharma, righteousness, artha, wealth, karma, desire, and moksha, liberation, desire. However, some elements of the Vedas have sparked lively debates, References to advanced technologies and knowledge that seems beyond the scope of a civilization from that era have led some to theorize about extraterrestrial involvement or connections with other ancient civilizations. When we start to dig into the intricacies of the Vedic civilization, we uncover striking resemblances to other ancient cultures, suggesting possible connections or shared influences. One of the most intriguing of these is the connection to ancient Egypt, both civilizations flourished around the same time and shared surprisingly similar practices. For instance, the concept of Mart in Egyptian civilization closely mirrors the Vedic principle of Artai, both denoting cosmic order and moral law. Furthermore, both civilizations demonstrated advanced knowledge of astronomy. For instance, the Egyptian pyramids and Vedic structures both show a high level of astronomical alignment. Was this merely a coincidence or was there a shared underlying knowledge that spanned these civilizations? The connection to ancient Sumer is also noteworthy. The Rig Veda, one of the oldest texts of the Vedic civilization, mentions River Saraswati, which is believed to be the present-day Gagahakra River. Interestingly, Sumerian texts also refer to a river similar to the Saraswati, indicating possible interactions between these civilizations. Another fascinating connection is seen in the similarities between the ancient Harappan symbols and the later Brahmi script used in the Vedic civilization. Could it be that knowledge was passed from one to the other, 
Perhaps one of the most intriguing theories, however, involves extraterrestrial influences. Some theories suggest that the knowledge and advancements of the Vedic civilization were influenced by alien civilizations, citing references to vimanas or flying machines in the ancient texts as evidence. While these connections are intriguing, it's important to approach them with a critical eye. The Vedic civilization, much like a supernova, may have had a relatively short lifespan compared to the cosmic scale of human history, but its impact continues to resonate even today. From the creation of Sanskrit, considered one of the oldest languages in the world and the mother of all Indo-European languages, to the foundational texts of Hindu philosophy, the Vedas, the civilization has left behind a cultural and intellectual legacy that is profound and enduring. Beyond language and religion, the Vedic civilization's contributions to science, particularly mathematics and astronomy, were remarkable. They conceptualized the idea of zero and developed a decimal system of counting, revolutionizing mathematical operations. In the realm of astronomy, they charted the movements of celestial bodies with striking accuracy, underlining a sophisticated understanding of the cosmos. These advancements are not only intriguing for their time, but continue to shape modern scientific thought and practices. The Vedic civilization's influence extended to social structures as well. The system of Varnas, a social hierarchy that would later evolve into the caste system, can trace its origins back to the civilization. While this has been a controversial legacy, it underscores the deep-seated influence of the Vedic civilization on the societal fabric of the Indian subcontinent. There are also fascinating yet controversial theories about the Vedic civilization's connection to ancient technology and even extraterrestrial life. References to Viminas, or flying machines in ancient texts, have sparked speculation about advanced, possibly alien technology. While these theories often skirt the realm of fringe science, they certainly add to the intrigue surrounding this civilization. As we delve deeper into the lore of the Vedic civilization, we find intriguing parallels and points of convergence with other ancient civilizations. One such connection arises with the Sumerians, one of the earliest civilizations in the world that sprouted in the fertile crescent of Mesopotamia. Like the Vedic civilization, the Sumerians had a pantheon of gods and they too were advanced in astronomical observations. Sumerian texts also speak of flying gods and chariots, which mirror the Vedic tales of Vimanas. Is it a coincidence that two distinct civilizations, separated by geography, came up with similar tales, or does it point towards a shared interaction with advanced technology, possibly extraterrestrial? Adding to the mystery are the theories postulating a connection between ancient civilizations and extraterrestrial beings. Ancient alien theorists propose that gods in both the Vedic and Sumerian pantheon were, in fact, advanced extraterrestrial beings who were mistaken as deities. They cite references to advanced technology, like the Vimanas in Vedic texts, and the detailed astronomical knowledge that far surpassed what would have been possible with the technology of the time. Furthermore, striking similarities in architectural designs, symbolism and religious rituals found across ancient civilizations have led to speculations of a shared ancient culture or a mother civilization. Some theories even suggest that this civilization could be the mythical city of Atlantis, which spread its knowledge across the world before it was lost to time. We've journeyed through millennia, across continents, and even ventured into the cosmos as we've explored the mysteries of the Vedic civilization, We've seen their incredible contributions, pondered their connections to other ancient civilizations, and even dared to question the possibility of ancient alien interactions. Whether or not these theories are true, they give us a deeper appreciation for the breadth of human history and the fascinating tapestry of cultures that have shaped our world. So, the next time you gaze up at the night sky, remember the Vedas, the Sumerians, and wonder, what could the ancients see that we've forgotten? Today, we embark on a journey to uncover the rich history and cultural connections between the Hurrians and Hittites, two influential civilizations that left their mark on the ancient Near East. We'll also investigate their potential ties to the Anunnaki, a group of deities from Mesopotamian mythology whose influence is said to have spanned across numerous ancient cultures. Let's begin by delving deeper into the origins and characteristics of the Hurrians and Hittites. Welcome to life's biggest questions. Let's continue now, shall we? The Hurrians were a prominent civilization that emerged around 2300 BCE and inhabited areas of present-day Syria, Turkey and Iraq. 
Their influence peaked during the second millennium BCE, and they left a lasting impact on the region with their unique language, monumental architecture, captivating art, and religious texts. The Hurrians formed various city-states and kingdoms, with the Kingdom of Mitanni being the most powerful Hurrian state, reaching its zenith between 1500 and 1300 BCE. The Hittites, in contrast, were an Indo-European people who established a formidable empire in what is now Turkey and northern Syria. Their civilization thrived during the second millennium BCE, and they were renowned for their military prowess, advanced legal system, and the impressive capital city of Hattusa. The Hittite Empire reached its peak under the rule of Sopiluliuma Wa and his son, Mursili II, successfully challenging the supremacy of other major powers, such as Egypt and Babylon, in the region. The Hurrians and Hittites interacted with each other and surrounding civilizations, exchanging goods, ideas, and even occasionally clashing in conflicts. Despite their differing origins, these two civilizations shared some cultural traits, religious practices, and mythological elements, which has sparked the curiosity of historians and researchers seeking to understand their potential connections with the Anunnaki. As we explore the Hurrians and Hittites, one aspect that stands out is their shared pantheon of gods and goddesses, along with overlapping mythological narratives. This common ground has prompted scholars to examine potential connections between these two ancient cultures and the Anunnaki, who were central figures in Mesopotamian mythology. The Anunnaki were considered a group of gods and goddesses descended from the sky god Anu and his consort Kai. They played a significant role in shaping human civilization by bestowing knowledge and technology upon humanity. Many of the deities worshipped by the Hurrians and Hittites shared resemblances and functions with the Anunnaki, which has fueled theories about cultural exchanges between these civilizations and their possible shared origins. One notable example is the Hurrian storm god Teshub, who bears similarities to the Mesopotamian storm god Adad, or Hadad, an Anunnaki deity. In Hittite mythology, the storm god Tarhunt or Tahuna also shares similar traits with the Mesopotamian Adad. These parallels suggest that the religious beliefs and mythologies of these cultures may have influenced one another, and that the Anunnaki's presence could have extended to the Hurrians and Hittites. The Hurrians, in particular, adopted and adapted many Sumerian myths into their own religious canon. One such example is the myth of Kamabi, a Hurrian adaptation of the Sumerian tale of Enlil and Ninlil, which describes a succession of divine rulers. The Hittites, who had a history of assimilating the gods and goddesses of conquered peoples into their pantheon, also absorbed Hurrian deities and myths. Another intriguing aspect of these shared mythologies is the presence of divine beings that descended from the heavens to interact with humans. In both Hurrian and Hittite myths, gods and goddesses often intervened in human affairs, guiding the course of history and shaping the destinies of kings and nations. This theme of divine interaction mirrors the role of the Anunnaki in Mesopotamian mythology, where they were said to have had a direct hand in shaping human civilization. These religious similarities and shared mythological elements between the Hurrians, Hittites and the Anunnaki provide fascinating insight into the complex web of cultural exchange and interaction that characterized the ancient Near East. The blending and adaptation of myths and religious practices between these cultures raise intriguing questions about the possible connections between them and the wider influence of the Anunnaki. As we delve deeper into the shared mythologies and cultural practices of the Hurrians and Hittites, we also encounter compelling evidence that suggests a significant influence of the Anunnaki on various aspects of their societies. This includes their legal systems, architectural styles, religious practices, and more. Let's explore some of these areas in more detail. In terms of legal systems, the Hittite Code of Laws shares many similarities with the famous laws of Hammurabi, the Babylonian king who was said to have received his laws directly from the Anunnaki god Marduk. For instance, both legal systems contain a similar structure with a prologue, a list of specific laws and an epilogue. They also feature comparable regulations on property rights, contracts and punishments for various crimes. This resemblance hints at the possibility of an Anunnaki influence on the development of legal systems in both Hurrian and Hittite societies. Architecturally, both the Hurrians and Hittites constructed monumental structures, such as temples, palaces and fortified cities. 
using advanced engineering techniques that may have been inspired by the Anunnaki. For example, the Hittite capital of Hattusa featured massive fortifications, including walls, gates and watchtowers, as well as elaborate drainage systems. These architectural achievements suggest a level of technical skill and knowledge that some argue could have been passed down by the Anunnaki. In terms of religious practices, the concept of divine kingship, which was central to both Hurrian and Hittite societies, echoes the role of the Anunnaki gods as rulers of the earth. Kings in both cultures were considered to be divinely chosen and were often associated with particular gods or goddesses. This close relationship between rulers and deities may have served as a means of legitimizing their authority and reinforcing their power, a practice that parallels the role of the Anunnaki in Mesopotamian mythology. The influence of the Anunnaki can also be seen in the importance of astronomy and astrology in both Hurrian and Hittite societies. Just like in Mesopotamia, the movements of celestial bodies were believed to hold great significance, and both cultures developed intricate systems for observing and interpreting these celestial events. This shared focus on astronomy and astrology further supports the idea of a connection between these ancient civilizations and the Anunnaki. Overall, the potential influence of the Anunnaki can be traced in various aspects of Hurrian and Hittite culture hinting at the possibility that the knowledge and wisdom of these deities were shared across the ancient Near East. But while definitive proof remains elusive, the similarities between these civilizations and their connections to the Anunnaki continue to captivate scholars and researchers who seek to unravel the mysteries of our ancient past. The potential connection between the Hurrians, Hittites and the Anunnaki is an enthralling subject and the search for tangible evidence to support these theories is an ongoing endeavor for historians and archaeologists alike. The ancient sites, artifacts and texts associated with these cultures offer valuable clues about their beliefs, practices and possible interactions with the Anunnaki. One of the most compelling sources of evidence is the cuneiform tablets found in the ancient cities of the Hurrians and Hittites. These texts provide invaluable information about the religious beliefs, myths and practices of these civilizations, offering insight into their possible connections with the Anunnaki. By studying these texts and comparing them with Mesopotamian myths and religious documents, researchers can identify parallels and shared themes that suggest a common cultural influence. Archaeological discoveries also offer valuable evidence about the potential connections between these ancient civilizations and the Anunnaki. For instance, excavations at Hittite and Hurrian sites have uncovered statues, reliefs and other artistic depictions of gods and goddesses that closely resemble the Anunnaki deities of Mesopotamian mythology. These discoveries lend support to the theory that the religious beliefs and artistic styles of the Hurrians and Hittites were influenced by the Anunnaki. Recent advances in archaeological techniques and technologies such as remote sensing and ground-penetrating radar have also facilitated the discovery of previously unknown sites and artifacts. These new findings may provide further evidence of the connections between the Hurrians, Hittites and the Anunnaki, shedding light on the complex web of cultural exchange that characterized the ancient Near East. As researchers continue to explore the wealth of information contained within ancient texts and archaeological remains, they also seek to establish connections between these civilizations and other cultures throughout the ancient world. This process of uncovering and analyzing the evidence is essential in developing a fuller understanding of the possible influence of the Anunnaki in these ancient societies and the broader context of human history. While it may be difficult to definitively prove the existence of the Anunnaki or their direct influence on the Hurrians and Hittites, the similarities between their respective mythologies and cultural practices provide a fascinating window into the ancient world and the interconnections between different societies. The pursuit of ancient knowledge, whether it is found in the legends of the Anunnaki or the historical records of the Hurrians and Hittites, reminds us of the enduring power of the human spirit to seek understanding and meaning in the world around us. As we continue to explore the mysteries of our ancient past and the countless civilizations that have shaped the course of human history, we are left with a sense of wonder and awe at the resilience and creativity of our ancestors. The stories of the Hurrians, Hittites and the Anunnaki serve as a testament to the potential of human achievement 
and the enduring quest for knowledge and understanding that has defined our species since time immemorial. I hope you enjoyed our video today. Please drop any comments and ideas for future videos down below.